Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And it's Friday night, and that means it's time for a five minute Friday. Now, I'm gonna state right now, I'm gonna blow right through the five minutes, but uh, let's put it on the clock anyway, and uh, let's get going. All right, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is something that if you're into Super Yacht, you've probably already know about, is the, the reveal, should I say, or the launch of the new Super Yacht Motor Yacht Solaris. So it was known as Project Solaris, but apparently he's decided to keep that name and it's gonna be known as Solaris, Motor Yacht Solaris. This is a person that you would think would never have to think of the phrase, hmm, I think I need a new Super Yacht. Uh, and that would be Roman Abramovich. So yeah, this is Roman Abramovich's vessel. It's a 140 meter, 11,000 gross ton uh, super yacht and it is an explorer vessel and it's allegedly designed to replace uh, Luna. So back in the day uh, Abramovich bought Le Grand Bleu which is what 113 meter vessel and um, yeah, and he, he loved the fact that it had a, a power boat and a sailing boat on the stern section. So because he bought Le Grand Bleu and he didn't build it himself. This is what this is my uh, this is my theory anyway. Uh, he when he when he got rid of Le Grand Bleu, which there was a story about him uh, losing it in a in a in a in a bet with a with one of his uh, business partners, and um, I actually mentioned it in a video once. But I found out that he actually sued a newspaper in the UK for that story, and he sued and won because they, he said it wasn't true. So. Anyway, for whatever reason, he decided to get rid of Le Grand Bleu and he built Luna and that was a, that was a replacement for it. And it was built along the same lines, 115 meters, similar gross tonnage, but the stern section was meant to house a uh, couple of boats. But apparently during the, uh, the build, once they, once they were fitting out the vessel, they realized that the stability wouldn't be good enough to have those um, two vessels on the stern, so they were never fitted. This uh, motor yacht Solaris is a replacement for Luna, because obviously he sold Luna, and it's now been in uh, in Dubai for three years, seized, while um, the, the, the new owner goes through a, a, a lovely divorce. And um, so, so um, Abramovich has built this new boat to replace Luna, uh, 140 meters, as I said, 11,000 gross tons. So it's over double the size of Luna, the previous by, uh, by, by gross tonnage. So that is a huge, huge vessel. So I know what you're thinking. What's the retail on one of those? And my answer would be more than you can afford, pal. The numbers being thrown around for this vessel's build cost is $600 million. Now, unless you're Roman Abramovich's bank manager, uh, I don't think anybody knows other than him and Roman Abramovich. So uh, I think it's a guess. In actual fact, that is the number that gets thrown around for the cost of Eclipse. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically a guess at this point. Um, so based on, based on that cost, and they say the average running cost of a vessel is 10% of the bill costs. So that would say that 60 million a year. Those numbers seem a little high to me, but knowing Roman Abramovich's tastes, I can see why he would spend as much as that on a vessel because he goes for, I mean, this is, this is, sounds odd to say this, but he goes for the absolute best of everything. Now, most super yachts are built along those lines, but he's like, you know, on the next level. As far as guests, um, the number being thrown around on guests is 36 in 30 cabins. Now the reason why 36 is because that's the most you can have on a yacht when it's built to the passenger yacht code. Any more than that and you would have to go to a commercial level of build. So, um, you know, and then it would be classed as a passenger vessel, not a super yacht. So it's most likely 36 or less. Where does that put Motor Yacht Solaris on the, on the, uh, on the scale? Last year, I did a video called the top 10 super yachts in the world by volume. You can uh, click on a link up here uh, and I'll put one below as well. The, based on the volume, uh, Solaris comes in at number nine 
because it's uh, 11,000 gross tons. Now, if you base it on length, it actually sits around number 12. It comes in at 140 meters, which is the same size as Ocean Victory, which was built by Fincantieri, and uh, Charasade, which was built by Lurson, I believe. That's another reason why it's good to measure vessels by uh, gross tonnage, because it's unlikely you're gonna have a vessel with the exact same gross tonnage as another one. The other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, the motor yacht uh, Go crash. I just wanted to do, uh, shed a little bit more light on it. So the, uh, the captain went public with his concerns about the vessel. He basically said that it was a malfunction. Uh, he talked about computer malfunctions and um, he said that he, he's, he has a concern about the way yachts are being built. He said the vessel has no redundancy in terms of manual overrides. Um, he, what he said happened is that they were, they were about to leave to go through the bridge and um, it was at that point where he was holding steady and then he said without warning there were no alarms and the vessel just started to push forward and he, had, he said he had about 13 seconds to make a decision on what to do and the, the course he was on he would have hit the bridge so he, he managed to use his bow thruster to push the vessel to the, to the port port side and then he crashed into the into the pier now after he did that um, the vessel you can see in the video the vessel moves forward hits the pier and then it moves backwards and then it goes forwards again now, it's hard to, to discern what's happening but in the in the video you see as it approaches the first time you can see the wash coming from the from the engines from from uh, from the propellers now on the port side, on the left side of the boat, you can see the wash is going forwards, which, which means that the engine is in reverse. It's pushing, it's trying to push the vessel backwards. But the starboard side engine appears to be the one that's propelling the vessel forward. So that's very strange. So after they crash, then the propulsion stops. You can see the, the wash stops. And then the vessel reverses, which I assume is the captain trying to reverse away from the pier. And then it starts to push forward again, and then he hits the pier again. Um, so yeah, it, it's very uh, worrying that that happened. And um, he's saying that basically he had no control over it. <clears throat> yeah, by the way, look, at, look in the video, you, you can see that the, the vessel is clearly in trouble. And yet a speedboat goes right round the bow of the ship, crosses over in front of the vessel and then another little boat goes goes past the second time after they've already crashed and they reverse out and then these boats are going by it's absolutely crazy and they could have very easily been the victims of that boat going out of control like that uh, there will be an investigation i'm sure it's already started and they will look for the cause of that now one of the interesting things that he said is is that there were no alarms the, end, the, 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 the vessel was holding its course, and then all of a sudden the, the vessel starts lurching forward. One of the things they need to look at, and I'm sure they will, is sabotage. It sounds very dramatic, the word sabotage, but it's possible that somebody was inside the system and they made changes, and that's why there were no alarms. Now, this, it is actually possible on modern vessels. Now, on older vessels, the uh, control stations were never connected to the internet. There, were, there, was, there was never any access that way, unless physically there was an issue and you were physically connected it to the internet to get somebody to be able to remote access. Like back in the day, um, before that kind of stuff, you would always have to have a technician fly out and it was you know, quite costly. Now obviously they've built into these new vessels a way for people to be in the system. Now, I've, I've actually been on a vessel and I've seen a, um, one of the control panels and I can see the mouse moving around. There's actually somebody in the system without our knowledge and we've had to contact the company and say, is that you? Now, as a result of that, we started to physically unplug the cable from the network so they couldn't get in unless we wanted them in. So it's quite possible that it was somebody was in the system and accidentally made changes while they were trying to fix some issue without telling the engineers, which is, like I said, I've seen that happen, or 
somebody deliberately got, gained access to it and caused the, the crash deliberately. This is something that I'm going to be talking about in a future video, uh, talking about super yacht security, cyber security, and, uh, and other types of security. So stay tuned for that one. By the way, if you have any questions about that subject, about um, super yacht security, put them below and, uh, and I'll try and incorporate them into the video. Put the questions below for that one. So it's, I'm going to be talking about super yacht security. So it can be any aspect of security that you want to ask a question, but I'm going to concentrate in the next video on, or in this video on cyber security. So anyway, uh, I'm going to round up here because I'm sure I blew through that five minute thing. Um, let me know what you think of the project and now Moti Yacht Solaris and also about the, the Moti Yacht Go crash. All right, guys, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great weekend. Bye bye. What's the retail on one of those things? And my answer would be more than you can afford. <laughs>